Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to preface by saying I'm sick as, as hell, so uh, there's that. Anyways, so I wanted to go ahead and make a video because this one guy asked. He was like, you make make song uh, video how I make song. And I was like, okay, I'll do fucking do that. So I'm going to do that. Um, so this is from my album, Bounty, that I released because it's awesome. I don't know. I don't really know how, what I'm doing here, so uh, let's just go through this. First off, we got the chords. Um, we got two sets of chords, chords high and chords low. They're just octaves apart. Um, I took Xenology and basically did my thing. And then, uh, and then I turned it into samples so it was a little bit easier to uh, mess with. Uh, so here's the low chords. So I kind of got that... Um, frequency i can't remember what it's called that thingy that does that um and then i have it on the other one as well um doing kind of the opposite so together so it makes a nice backing it makes a nice uh platform for the song to sit on top of um and then on top of that the kick and then the uh the arpeggio, which I love, I love those things, but I like to do them manually. So I have a couple of automations going on here. So first is the um, release here. Um, so without it, it sounds like this. And then with it. Um, and then next I have the panning, which is fun. Um, without it kind of weird so why uh, back and forth yeah so then all together i wanted to ride hi-hat in the song but i didn't know what to do so i just kind of threw one in and did a bunch of stuff And then there's, I will put a little flange on it, so that's fun. And then I kind of mess with the, um, the panning of it to make it kind of do some weird things. Anyways, um, there's that. Uh, and then together, obviously. Um, and then after that, uh, this next part comes in, it's kind of a choir -y sound i actually just used the the doom snes sound font for that um because it's cool uh anyways that's what that sounds like so there's a few things going on there uh the panning of course is one of them um if i could turn that on so on its own like that um, sounds boring without the panning uh and then you and then you go with the uh the channel pitch which is my favorite part of it um basically it is modulating the pitch of the whole entire channel up and down by an octave and now that end part is kind of hard to hear because i side chained it with the kick and so once you get to that point it's kind of hard to hear in the final song, but it's still a nice little touch, touch that I added. Um, and then I also added this white noise, the three osk uh, white noise, just kind of uh, adds a, t a little bit to it, a little texture. And then I added, you know, filter to that, so it, it kind of sounded different. Uh, and then there's this part that just holds it. But if you pull the kick over it, uh, I side changed it so that. It does that, and then uh, this is the bass. Uh, it's just a bass plugin that I use, um, paired with the snare. Kind of sounds weird with just that, but once you add the kick, and then obviously all the other textures. Now 
Now this part, I don't know if anybody really noticed it. Um, there's uh, automation on the swing that goes up. So if you, I think it's most prevalent in this. And then it returns back to normal after that. So uh, this is a nice little touch I added. I think I think it's cool. It's kind of made it a little bit weirder. And then you go into the next part, which is the main swing part, which um, that's cool. <laughs> Now to add a little bit of texture to this section, I actually added a, almost like a counter instrument to the uh, main synth here. So it pans the opposite way of the uh, main instrument, main synth. So uh, it kind of chases it around in a way. And layered, I think they'll sound really good. And then the end section, I just automated the tempo straight up to go up to like 522, which is, or 552, I don't remember. Uh, just the max BPM, just so it kind of goes fast as shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so there's that song. Yeah, so this song, 13.8. I, I, I divided it into four, four, five, so two measures of four, one measure of five. Um audio wise like hearing it um measure wise it's it's 13 8 i like i like that time signature so my favorite part about this song is this instrument um it is just a regular synth but i put a shitload of effects on it and here's how i did that so this is the original, um, I made it so this is all the way down, you cannot hear it in the master, but it is still sending out audio to the other tracks. So I routed that to number 4, put some um, reverb on it, 100% mix, and from there, now I have an external custom um, reverb effect that I can mess with. So what I did with that is I sidechained the entire reverb effect uh, with the kick. As it fades in, it gets a little bit more prevalent. So you can still hear the main instrument, but the reverb side chains and kind of quiets down when the kick hits. Uh, and then there's the bass, which is actually just something I made in Vital. Now normally it sounds like this. I turned this part off because it's a little bit too scratchy for the song. Kind of it simplified it, but in a good way, I think. And then you got the snare, I think. No, the hi hat. And I side chained that, or not side chained. I uh, automated that to down sample over time over 13 beats. And then all together, of course. And then. I added a simple little filter here, just to give it a little bit more uh, kick, in a way, in a sense. Um, this song is very simple, it, it, I didn't really do much to it, I just kind of threw things together. It was a nice song, I liked it. And then you got this section, uh, I bring in a new instrument. Kind of in the background, but it does accent and counter this main melody. Main melody. I really like this rest here that I put in um, on the bass, and then I uh, mirrored that over onto the kind of uh, texture that I put in the background to follow that and give it more of a punch. And then the obvious one is going to be this uh, background synth here. Has a buttload of effects on it, um, um, cause I oh yeah I ran it to four as well, so uh, 
Here's what that would sound like without reverb. And uh, my favorite part of that, of course, is these, these last few measures here. Um, it's kind of hard to hear like what I was trying to do with it in the song, but um, it did turn out well, I think so. Um, now, for the song that you all have been waiting for, I'd assume anyway, Cicada. This one was like actually a blast to make. I really like making this one. So here's the story behind this one. Um, I found this video, right, on the internet, called, uh, a place called YouTube that you're watching this from, and uh, it was like Cicada drops hard-ass beat, and I'm like, damn, that is hard as fuck, and so I made it, and I edited it into a 4-4 pattern. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I honestly, I could have done a little bit better with the audio editing. There's, there's a little bit of peaking in there, but in the end, I used it kind of as a hi hat in the background. So, uh, yeah, there's the, there's the bass, which I added kickstart too, so it kind of fades in every beat. And then the kick obviously follows that. I do like this kick. It has a, a very natural feel almost. Okay, that cicada adds quite a bit of texture to that section and every section after that. Um, I think this is the, this is the open hat. And then as we come into this section, um, I did this kind of riser. So I um, reversed this, played it through, took the reverb, reversed it again, and then kind of spliced it up, made it sound cool. And then added the pitch bend to it. I like that uh, kind of effect on it. Um, and then that leads into this synth. Which some of you will recognize as a very funk sounding thing. It is. Um, I made a cowbell uh, based on the original um, cowbell synth. I can't I can't remember exactly where it's from, but it's based on that. And I've used it, I think, in a couple of funk songs that I've made, or you know, in the background of just regular songs. So that's what that leads up into. Um, and then with the bass, of course. And then there's the percussion. And then the riser and fall, which are side-chained, or kick-started, I guess. Now this part, um, there's a little attention to detail that I gave it. Um, I, I did two more two tracks of the cicada, offset it by, I think, like four measures, and then, uh, and then panned them left and right, so they're kind of on both sides. So that's what that sounds like. Um, there's there's a few uh, you know drum fills that I threw in there, and then we get to this next section, and I think I added a new synth here. Yep. And I kind of pan that left and right. So it kind of transitions to this to this you know intense kind of build up back into the regular song. So we'll listen to that. So that kind of builds up over time, and then you get to this part. So it uh, you know does these four notes twice. One more time into So 
so back to the main chorus. Um, the one thing that I actually find weird about this is I put these, um, the same reverse buildup um, that I did with the uh, cowbell on on this. I didn't do it with the synth, but it definitely sounds, it, it, in the buildup and in the main song, it sounds like it's transitioning into this uh, other synth that I did later. Especially when every track is playing. And then you get to the end, dies down, and ends with a little bit of cicada. Next, the final song, which I fittingly named Finalize. Um, I like this one. It's 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 a seven eight time signature. Um, extremely simple, like bare bones as shit. Um, but here's that. So what I did here was the same as uh, the second song. Um, I routed the main track to a secondary track, put reverb on it, and then uh, routed the side chain to that track, and of course side tra side chained the reverb. So here's that. And then you get to the uh, build up where the main instrument is no longer uh, turned down. The main instrument is now there and uh, on top of the reverb. That's what that sounds, this is what this sounds like. And then, <clears throat> this is where the bass comes in. I really like this bass, it's a, it's a serum preset. I just kind of scrolled through, found one, and used that. Percussion is kind of picking up there. And then there's this section. I kind of wanted to go back, you know, like you're turning a light switch off and it gets dark again, you know what I mean? And one thing that I find funny is uh, if you play this on its own, Some extreme reverb behind it until you turn the kick on. <laughs> <laughs> 